Hey there, Sharon Hornells from here. Welcome to day 156 of our BU 365 day challenge to do one thing every day that improves us. This month, we're focusing on relationships. And yesterday we talked about relationship beliefs, some that can benefit us, but some that can also hold us back. So today we are going to talk about, and I'm going to share the best, in my opinion, of course, the best way. And I've tried a lot of different ways and looked into a different a, a lot of different tools and techniques and strategies for changing limiting beliefs, not just with respect to relationships, but with respect to all different areas and aspects of our life. So I'm going to share what I think is the seven step best process that I've used so far in my life. Maybe another one will come along or a tweak will come along that makes it more effective, more uh, happen more quickly, more easy to do. But for right now, this is the one I favor. Now, it's a seven-step process. But first, let's talk about what, and I'll demonstrate and talk about the steps, but then I'll go through an example using the survey I did on LinkedIn yesterday. I asked four. I could only pick four of the 20 uh, beliefs that we talked about yesterday. And remember, I admitted I have at some time or other in my life believed all of these, every single one of them. And it was only through experiences and challenges that I let some of them go. I still admit that there are a few on the list that will sneak up, rear their heads, and show up in my life and in my relationships. Uh, the one, the thing about the survey, I, I could only pick four, and of those four, I had to change the wording a little bit so that it would fit into the number of characters that LinkedIn limits you to on their polls. Their polls are really cool, but you only have so many characters. I don't know how many it is. I didn't count. But you only have so many characters, and it's short. So I took what was if you can't handle me at my worst, you don't deserve me at my best. And I changed it to take the bad to get the good. And that was the one that actually got 36% of the votes. 29% were for um, right one will make me ha make you happy. 29% for share everything with your partner. And 7% for relationships aren't hard work. So those were the breakdown of the beliefs. So I will talk about take the good with the bad. You know, if you can't handle me at my worst, then you don't deserve my best. And I will go through this seven step process because I would say at one point, I actually believed that in my marriage and in my, my primary relationship and uh, learned through a bunch of experiences, many of them very, very bad, that I love my children unconditionally, but I don't necessarily love my significant other, my spouse unconditionally. There are things that another person can do to you that will destroy the relationship. If they do something that's against your absolute core values, that will that can destroy the relationship. And that's what happened in my relationship. So what is the process for taking a belief, number one, and, and understanding if it might be limiting you or preventing you from getting what you want? A lot of times, on a subconscious level, we have no idea that we have literally hundreds and hundreds of beliefs working on autopilot in our subconscious. So they filter out the things we'll even see, the people will even notice, the, the experiences we'll even have, because they filter out a whole bunch of them based on our current beliefs without us even knowing it. So every once in a while, we will become consciously aware of something, and that gives us the opportunity to decide is this something I want to consciously choose to believe and keep in my subconscious using as a filter? Because there's so many filters that benefit us. You know, we would be overwhelmed as human beings and unable to function if we had to consciously be aware of every stimulus, every thought, every feeling, everything. We, we would go crazy, right? So our, our conscious and our subconscious, our subconscious does this great job of automatically filtering everything and then showing us only on a conscious level what's important based on how we've programmed it. The things that we've told it are important to us. Now, a lot of times the things that we told our subconscious that are important to us happened before we were like seven years old, according to scientists and studies. And some, many, most of which actually before we're five years old. Well, how able were we to choose what those things were before we were five years old or seven years old, whether it's five or seven, it doesn't matter. You know, any way you look at it, a five-year-old looking at a situation and a 20-year-old or a 30-year-old or a 40-year-old or your 50-year-old self looking at a situation ought to be able to 
determine and pull different things out of that situation. So if we, the first step is always becoming aware of the belief, right? So the belief, if you selected the belief, take the bad with the good, you know, no matter what, I have to accept my partner at their worst if I want to get their best, if I'm ordered to deserve their best. Now, I'm going to talk about all of these beliefs in a, a minute because I have learned that there's trigger words in my beliefs. And if I notice one of those trigger words, it automatically causes me to run through this process and question that belief, whether I want to keep it or, you know, if it can stay or if it needs to go. So what are the steps? <clears throat> I like to use unravel, but I haven't quite figured out that acronym for unraveling that fits with the seven steps, but I'll work on that because I think it's kind of interesting. I love doing that, finding words or acronyms that help me remember the steps of a process until it becomes automatic for me. So what are these seven steps that we're going to use to take the, a belief that we want to question and we can go through this process and actually solidify and make the beliefs we want to have that will move us toward what we want faster even more powerful and even better filters in our subconscious so step one is to ask myself is this belief 100 percent true so step one understanding the belief noticing the belief and then asking is it 100 percent true almost any belief we have whether we think it's positive or negative is not 100 percent true right Almost nothing is 100% all of the time in any situation true, right? Things change. Everything changes. We change. What we believed and was 100% true for us when we were seven is different than what's 100% true for me, at least, when I'm 62. Even when I was 60. Heck, when I was 50. Things change. So, number one question, is it 100% true? Number two question, are you 100% sure that it's true? If I say something like, I'm not good enough, is that 100% true? Well, of course it's not. In some situations, I'm good enough. In other situations, I may not measure up to other people's standards or the standard of acceptability, whatever, but it's not 100% true. I am more than enough in, often too much, in, in different situations. So it's not 100% true. Number two, are you sure it's 100% true? And this is when we go out and we look for evidence. And believe me, whenever we ask our subconscious or our mind a question, it will serve us up all sorts of answers. So when you say, are you sure it's 100% true? You're asking your subconscious to prove to you that every single time in every situation throughout your entire life so far, this belief has been true for you. So in every relationship, in every situation, from the day you were born to now and into the future, is this 100% true for you? And so, for example, if we take our example, and I like the longer version of it because I think it's much more clear. If you can't take, handle me at my worst, you don't deserve me at my best. Well, is that 100% true all of the time? Would I ever expect anyone in my life, any relationship, not just my my primary partner relationship, would I ever expect them to take, no matter how badly I treat them, no matter how bad I behave, no matter what I do, and and they they have to accept that and be okay with it in order for me to be kind or, or nice or treat them the way they ought to be treated? Absolutely not. So there again, that's probably, those first two questions are really powerful because so often we just think of things in absolutes and we believe if we think we're not good enough in one situation, well, then we we just automatically apply that to every other situation. And we don't want to do that, right? We want to take and be situational. Every situation, every experience we want to handle differently based on who we are and what we want out of that experience. So one, is it true? Is it 100% true? Not just is it true, because it can be partly true, right? Maybe in a certain situation, and your subconscious will serve these up for you too. It'll show you all the times when you weren't good enough, when you didn't measure up, or when you did accept the bad of a person, all the bad, even though they treated you like crap, and because you were so uh, wanting to be loved and accepted by them. Uh, anybody that's been involved in a a unhealthy relationship knows exactly what I'm talking about. Uh, number three, 
What does holding on to this belief actually do for you? Because guess what? Our negative beliefs, our limiting beliefs, our good beliefs, all of them, everything our subconscious does is for our benefit. So maybe it's just to keep us safe. Maybe holding on to that belief is because in the past it worked and we believe that it will continue to keep us safe. That's what all of our limiting beliefs are. They're just in place to keep us safe and secure according to our subconscious, right? And according to our old reptilian brain that is programmed for fight or flight, it's all designed to keep us safe. Our subconscious brain is, you know, one of the oldest parts of the human brain and therefore still operating whether we want it to or not. So is this belief 100% true? Are you 100% sure it's true? What we, what does holding on to this belief do for you? What does it do for you? Maybe it gets you out of taking personal responsibility for your life. Maybe it gets you out of um, the uncertainty of finding a different relationship. Maybe it gets you out of the uncertainty of having to find a different job. There are a lot of people that this uh, particular belief applies to with respect to their, their work life. Uh, you know, you have to take the bad to get the good. Well, you have to put up with the negative things in your work environment in order to get to keep your job and pay, you know, get paid. That's there's there's probably millions and millions of people that are in dysfunctional, sick, cultural work environments, but they stay because of the fear of having to find another job or the fear of not having an income in order to provide for themselves and their family. Uh, number four. So there's always a benefit or we wouldn't be doing it. Or there's an old belief about our safety and benefit and fear. It's usually fear of change uh, that is holding that belief in place. Uh, number four, who will you become in 10 years from now by holding on to this belief? Who will you become 10 years from now as a result of holding on to this belief? If you keep this belief and, and keep believing that if you can't handle the worst me at my worst you don't deserve me at my best what will happen in your relationship what will happen to you uh, my personal experience is that you get smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller more afraid uh and actually do less and become less and less of yourself as you experience that that's just been my experience but but what will become of you think about it imagine it really visualize 10 years from now if you keep going down this road with this belief what what might happen to you what might your life be like uh number five what will the cost be 10 years from now if this belief is not changed right now right away so what is the cost to you so what would your life be like visualize it, and then start to calculate what is the cost of this to you to me it was the cost of not taking risks and making choices that were in alignment with who i really was and actually it was a sudden cardiac arrest uh, so number six, who could you become and how would you act without that belief? What if, what if, I like what if sometimes, you were to let go of that belief and and who might you become? What might your life be like? Start to imagine that. And then seven, what will your life be like 10 years from now if you change this belief right now? So what could it be like? And then what? imagine what your life would be like if you change this belief right now, if you let this belief go and then replace it with something that was more empowering to you, more in alignment with who you really are. Uh, so for example, this one, if, if, we, if we have a belief, and like I said, I hate to admit that I had this belief. If you can't handle me at my worst, you don't deserve me at my best. And this was not me believing this about myself. This was me believing that I had to accept everything about my significant other, the good, the bad, and the ugly, if I wanted that person to love me and accept me. Now, that person, in in, in more than one situation, it wasn't just my ex-husband. I had a pattern of this. Uh, a lot of times, that person didn't deserve my best, but I didn't realize that at the time. So, uh, the final piece of this is once we go through this exercise you might have to do it a couple of times because it's it's hard right anything we do that requires thinking and 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 
analyzing our beliefs and the things we believe for a long time, our subconscious is going to try to sabotage that process. And that's why I like this process is it's really simple. And it's, you know, I learned a similar process from Tony Robbins and NLP and all different places, but this is the one that works the best for me. Is it a hundred percent true? Am I sure it's a hundred percent true? What is holding on to it do for me? Cause there's something it does for me. Or I wouldn't have held on to it this long. And maybe it's just, I don't have to think about it. I just go through the motions and I don't have to stress or worry about the uncertainty or fear that comes along with change for what's going to happen 10 years from now. If I don't change this belief, visualize that five, what will the cost of that be to me and to the people I love and care about the other people I love and care about and other relationships or the relationships I don't have that could be so much better for me. Uh, what would become of me and how would I act? If I let go of this belief and finally 10 years from now, what would the, my life be like if I had let go of that right now? And then finally, what we want to do is we want to take, I like to take, and I do this all the time, the, the belief I've got right now. And then I ask myself, well, what's the exact opposite of that belief, right? And if it's, uh, take the bad to get the good, or if you can't handle me at my worst, you don't deserve my best. What's the opposite of that? I would say, let's see, take the bad with the good to get the good. What? And I don't know that this is a good one for opposite. Take the good to get the bad. No. Uh, obviously I didn't think this one through ahead of time. Um, if you can't handle me at my worst, you don't deserve me at my best. Well, oh, I don't, I don't even like this one, right? I don't think we, we should never be involved in relationships with people that make us feel bad, right? Are we going to have fights? Are we going to have arguments? Are we going to disagree? Are we going to have challenges? Yes. But if overall you feel bad, or hurt or angry or any of the negative emotions, fear especially, more than you feel good, this is not the right relationship for you. <laughs> People will tell you it's not the right relationship for you, but until you decide that, you'll stay in that relationship. That's been my experience. So, you know, a more empowering belief is, I deserve someone who loves me for who I am. I deserve to be treated with, with dignity, love and respect. Uh, and I give that in return, something to that effect. Uh, but we want to take our, our replace this belief with a positive belief that moves us toward what we want. We all want to be loved and cared about and able to be ourselves. But, you know, if you're an a-hole, maybe you should learn not to be an a-hole and not think that other people should accept you for, for that. If you're a curmudgeon old grump, maybe people shouldn't accept you for being a curmudgeon old grump. And you should seek to change your behavior if you want people to love and care for you. Now, well, we still love our grumpy people, right? I like to be loved when I'm grumpy, but I also know that I, can, I don't expect to be loved if I'm grumpy all the time or negative all the time. Uh, so we take that empowering belief, we write it on a card and we carry it with us for 30 days, or we put it on our phone as a screensaver. So we see that positive affirmation, that result we want, that behavior, that belief we want to have instead of the one we don't want to have. And we look at that all the time. We see that all the time. We visualize what our life is like and how, and we look for the way our life is and our relationship is improving because we've, we've substituted this belief for a less empowering belief. So think about, I'm not good enough. That's, that's one of the most common beliefs or I don't deserve. Those are probably the most common beliefs in at least America. Uh, What's the opposite of that? I am more than enough. I rise to the occasion. I am always figuring things out. Anything that, that feels right to you that replaces that, I'm not good enough. So whenever I'm not good enough pops into your head, you automatically think and say the opposite of that. I'm, I am rise to the occasion. I always do what I need to do to be successful. Whatever speaks to you, I'm not good enough, boom. What is your response to that? I am more than enough. I am more than good enough. I am good enough for any situation I find myself in, um, et cetera. And then you just automatically, whenever I'm not good enough or you have to take the good with the bad pops into your head, you automatically just respond with your, 
more positive version of events. And sometimes you might have to go back and go through this process again to reinstall and reinstate and take the power away from that negative belief. Sometimes they don't go away the first time around, right? Wouldn't it be nice if they did, right? But they don't. So that's our process. Our action item today is just to take one of your beliefs that you think might not be serving you as well as it could be and question it. Go through the process and you might find, oh my gosh, this, this belief is true for me. I want to keep it and I'm going to move forward with it. But you also might find, okay, I need to substitute something else and then substitute something else. If you have any of the beliefs we talked about, the, the 20 yesterday, here's a little trick that I noticed. If you ever hear absolutes in a belief that you're using, I never, I always, I can't, the word can't, um, should never, the word should, if those key words pop up in your belief, guess what? That belief is limiting you. If there's an absolute, I should never think negatively. I should never fight. I should always be happy. <laughs> Come on. None of us are always happy. I consider myself a pretty happy person and I am not always happy. I should never be frustrated. I had a belief that I should never be frustrated, but I was always frustrated. So we have to be careful because our subconscious doesn't hear negatives or absolutes. It, it doesn't hear the never. It just hears, I should be frustrated or I am frustrated. It really hears, I am frustrated, even though I'm saying I should never be frustrated. So look for those words in your beliefs. And if they're in there, say, hmm, maybe there's something wrong with this. Absolutes are never 100% true, right? Absolutes definitely aren't 100% true for you, no matter what they are. If you're ever saying, I am not good enough, you're, you're telling yourself a lie, or I can't do this. There's no such thing as can't. So that's our topic for today. I think I made it very long-winded. Any questions, hit me up. Otherwise, do this, and I will be with you tomorrow. We're going to talk about uh, the different areas, and I don't know what we're going to talk I don't have my calendar. I'm not sure what we're going to talk about, but we're going to head into the SOAP framework this week. So probably we're going to pick the relationship we want to SOAP up. All right, have an awesome day, and I'll be with you tomorrow.